How's the king and fellas? I'm Orosh, and this is another episode of Pat Upon 2. And in today's episode... Is it another one of those episodes where I just do a bunch of useless bullshit in between me actually continuing the plot and doing the main story? Because I believe there's only one mission left in the game. But... When I was recording this, I guess I didn't believe in myself hard enough, and I believed that I need to fucking upgrade my character. Oh fuck, I ain't got nothing to drink but just fucking apple juice. You know what, apple juice is my favorite kind of juice. What's your favorite kind of juice? Tell me all about it in the fucking comments. If you want, of course. Yeah, I was about to say, why the fuck did I enter like some whatever quest and I just switched my megapons for archers what's what's my plan here what's my goal what the fuck am i doing i ain't sure what the fuck am i doing uh i saw a lot of um footage of the grand theft auto trilogy like actually in action gameplay some cutscenes instead of giving us a gameplay trailer or a gameplay reveal or something like that rockstar decided to share bits of gameplay through their fucking giphy page so now you can use gifs that actually have footage of the gameplay and a lot of people say wow this game looks better than expected god fucking damn it i fucking knew it i knew this would happen and my now my commentary is probably fucked There's like this weird thing where I turn on the recording, there's like a second delay. I hope I fucking manage to time this right. My microphone's fucking low as fuck. Yeah, so what the fuck I was saying? Uh, Grand Theft Auto Trilogy uh, continues to surprise me on how shit it fucking looks. It continues to surprise me on how fucking little fuck that Rockstar gave a flat. <laughs> fucking damn it, just pisses me off fucking thinking about it how little of a fuck they give a shit about their own fucking franchise except for Grand Theft Auto 5 enhanced and fucking whatever the fuck the new re-release of GTA 5 is called I wanna call it fucking I don't even know fucking what the fuck to call it fucking bullshit fucking garbage I fucking hate Grand Theft Auto 5 I went from hating it when it came out because I didn't like the story to really liking it and being like, it's objectively the best Grand Theft Auto game I ever played. I still think that probably is true. Just because we never got 6 to beat it. But I'm back to fucking hating that fucking game. I hate it. I fucking hate it back. Even though I do kinda wanna... I don't know why I had this like weird fucking... Uh, feeling like I really wanted to play online again. And I thought, like, maybe if I play by myself, I could, like, actually... Maybe if I somehow managed to get my save file from back on PS3, where I actually had level 40 character. That's not really high in GTA Online, but still. I had, like, an apartment, cars, weapons. It's better than starting from nothing. And I was thinking, like, if I could get, manage to get that, It'd be pretty cool. I remember when I recorded the bonus episode to Grand Theft Auto 5 Let's Play where I played online for like an hour. And for some reason the game just like throws you in. Like you turn on online and just fucking throws you in. Like you make your character and you just fucking get kicked right into the game. But I remember when I started online on PS3 there was like a cutscene of you arriving on a plane. Lamar shows up to like introduce you to characters. You immediately get like a cool story mission. I think after that you get like some more story missions and then like after like maybe three of them you actually get to do whatever the fuck you want and now you don't really get story anymore. Except for like when you level up and you actually do get introduced to more characters such as Trevor and you have to actually uh, drive up to Trevor's trailer and talk to him which is pretty cool. But it seems like that's not the case anymore you're just fucking thrown into the game and fucking do it. Fuck, there's no narrative. Fucking bullshit. <sighs> the fuck am I expecting from Rockstar? I don't think anybody from the original team is 
part of them anymore. Oh, that's what I'm trying to do. I guess I'm trying to defeat this fucking thing again. That's why I took my archers instead of my... Instead of my, um... Horsemen. This thing spews fire. So that's why I wanted archers instead of my... Horse batapons, because archers are probably better. And now I have... A reason to actually not fuck it up, because look. This is a good shoulder pad I just fucking got. Let's hope I'll manage to keep it. Or grab it in the first place. Like my decapons are just like just out of reach. And I got like a badass horse. I have a fire horse and there's like a better version of it. Come on, please, quick! I'll get it. No, fuck! This fucking... Oh my god, I fucking missed it just... Oh, fucking bullshit. You saw that? It fucking disappeared right in front of me. Oh my fucking god. The fuck else I was talking about? Oh, something that's actually really fucking cool on the other hand. That doesn't piss me off. Maybe a little bit, but not really. Um, a surprise fucking release. Uh, Borderlands 2. Tiny Tina's Assault and Dragon Keep. Get a standalone release. It's called Tiny Tina's Assault and Dragon Keep Wonderlands One Shot Something. <laughs> I think it was adventure. Jesus Christ, what's wrong with me today? I can't fucking breathe. Yeah, and what it is is basically you buy it for ten bucks. Kind of sucks that you have to buy it, even though I own the fucking DLC already as part of the Handsome Collection. I kind of wish they would just let me fucking have it, since I already. Since I already do have it, I don't want to pay $10 more just to fucking... Why did I quit like that? Come on. I still could have pulled it off. Or could I? I oh, don't fucking know what the fuck I'm doing. I should have really recorded this commentary right after I did this Let's Play instead of a year later, because now I don't fucking remember what the fuck I was doing. And... <clears throat> oh, because I didn't... Took the back wind with me. Hold on. Some fucking bummer. Maybe I'll get my shoulder pads that I wanted. Or probably not. Yeah, and... The game's for 10 bucks, unless you're using Epic Game Store before the 16th of November. Which this video probably comes out way after 16th of November, so you'll probably... If you hear, hear it first from me, the game is 10 bucks. But it was for free on... Epic Game Store. While I'm recording this, is, it still is, but by the time this comes out, I gotta think ahead, you know? It's not anymore. So, yeah, actually, when you're watching this video, there's probably already episodes of Grand Theft Auto the Trilogy on my channel. I probably bitched about it a whole fucking lot over there. I've been continuing streaming Borderlands 2, which is pretty cool. There's a lot of Borderlands related shit happening recently, at least with me. We're close to the end of the game, I'm in Soft Tooth Cauldron, everybody's favorite location in the game. That doesn't have quests that fucking suck and are annoying to do. Especially that one with the fucking flag. No, they're all fun. Fun place. Best location in the game. I don't think there's even like any... No, I actually did get a shoulder pad. I don't think there's any particularly good reason to go to uh, Salt to Cauldron anyway. Like, outside of the main story and the side missions. Is there, like, any fucking boss fight there? There's not a boss fight at the end, which is kind of weird to think there would be. But there isn't. I don't even think there's, like, any unique enemies that you can farm and get something good out of. No, I think there is one. Yeah, there is one guy. He drops a grenade, I think. I don't remember what grenade, but he does. And I guess there's also the Tannis on the fish. Stupid easter egg, but no one fucking cares about that. I wonder if Tannis on the fish will come back in Wonderlands, even though this... I don't know if Tannis will make an appearance. I got a feeling a lot of Borderlands characters will make appearances in this one, in Wonderlands, just under different names and looking different. Oh yeah, so, what? like, Wonderlands actually, I mean, the... Uh, Assault and Dragon keep standalone. Actually adds quests 
from the base Borderlands 2 into this DLC. So it's not just Borderlands 2 DLC, there's actually new content there. I mean, re reused content from previous uh, missions. Such as Shoot Me in the Face, M Face McShooty side mission. Makes a comeback, except M Face McShooty looks like a knight now. But everything else is the same. It sounds the same, it's just a reused quest with a different bundle. Uh, the Bane comes back for some reason. It's slightly different. You don't get the Bane from a grave, now you actually have to fight a skeleton. That's a new enemy. The safe icon looks different from what I've seen. There's like a new special chest, which is basically just the golden chest, but gives you slightly more items. I never really cared about the golden chest because it doesn't really give you anything I'm interested in. And... And what the fuck else? And one fucking thing I noticed is that the subtitles look different than in the actual Borderlands game. They have like this a black box around them instead of just highlighted. That's kind of weird. Well, I got a cool shoulder pad. I don't know what the other shoulder pad I could have gotten if it didn't fucking disappear right in front of my face. Would have been if it would be better than the ones I have. But this is a shoulder pad I, you can see I have equipped on one of my Decapons. So at least this is a tested proved to be good shoulder pad, so at least I don't need to be like, oh, I wonder if it's any good, and then, just, and then I'm gonna find out it fucking sucks. At least I know it's good. Oh my fucking god, why do I have the back one now? I can't fucking reach this stupid fucking Boba Pond. Dumbass fucking idiot. I hate Boba Pons. They piss me off when they're on my team, they piss me off when they're on the enemy team. I'm just like pissed off today for some fucking reason. Woke up with my fucking left leg, as they say. Yeah, so I'll try to finish Borderlands 2 on a live stream today. Which I think I will pull it off. And then uh, we're going to... And then I'm going to... Um, well, probably take a bit of a break and then I'm gonna probably stream again. Later at night. When I'm, I'm probably gonna stay up late today, just playing D8 Trilogy. We're gonna see how it goes. I'm probably gonna start with GTA 3 on a live stream, but my let's play I wanted to start off by playing Vice City. Because when I played the original versions of the Grand Theft Auto trilogy a while back, I played it GTA 3, Vice City, and San Andreas in order of release. But I thought maybe I should spice it up a bit, and with this time around I should do it uh, lore-wise, you know? From the earliest event to the, to the newest. I don't even bring up my biggest complaint with this fucking trilogy remaster is that it doesn't remaster stories which are maybe not essential but they're, you know, still part of the fucking story and a lot of stuff gets revealed about like the events of Free or um, Vice City Vice City and Liberty City stories being like setups for those games even though they took happen after the, the games. Yeah, whatever. I was watching more Lupin. You know what's another anime that caught my attention recently? It's called Golgo 14. I don't think it's much of an anime, but I looked up and there was some a there's two anime movies and I think there is like like just like you know it's kinda like a one shot anime where it doesn't have like seasons of content. That's like only one. So, I don't know, I'll probably... I think Cowboy Bebop is like that too. It doesn't have like fucking five seasons to watch. It just has like one. Which is good. Because, for example, recently I realized that when I watched part two of Loop on the Third, I only watched the episodes that were translated to English. And there's 79 episodes that were translated to English. Because part two was so long that part two is actually separated into four seasons. And I only watched 79 episodes. But there's actually 155 episodes. So I have a bunch more episodes of part 2 that i never seen that I'm probably gonna watch at some point. And I actually got a bit interested in the Golgo 13 thing because I think one of the episodes in part 6, at least from the like the screenshot i seen, has uh, the main character of it? 
Or at least he looks like him. Yeah. What's that? Ah, fuck off. I have my phone in front of me because I'm doing something else on the side here. My side gig. Ooh, my tatapons. Oh, I kind of want to equip them with a bunch of shit. I bet they all, all have like useful shields they can use. Next mission. Oh yeah, next episode. Episode five, I believe it is. It kind of come. It kind of brings an end to the whole like beginning arc. I gotta say, it's better than how Italian. I mean, the season four did it, where where like it begun, and then it kind of had like a filler episode where it seemed like the the characters just completely forgotten about the main events and like the overarching story, and they just went through some silly shit. Which I thought was kind of jarring, like, last episode, like, Lupin gets arrested. And then the next episode, he's already, like, doing some silly shit. And then the next episode, it gets revealed that. I guess the episodes weren't happening right after another. So that's kind of weird. Look, I have a catapult with me. I guess this, this mission permanently gives you a catapult. I guess this mission would be so fucking ridiculously hard without the catapult, they just had to give it to you. A thousand damage? The catapult doesn't even look like it's doing that much, it just like shoots little fucking rocks. And then it turns out it's fucking dealing the most damage out of anything i ever seen in this game. Yeah, so in this episode, Lupin finally fucking... Like I was saying last time, it got, got revealed that Lupin didn't die. But one reveal I didn't understood was that it, apparently the drone uh, operator was actually Fujiko the entire time. And I'm not sure, does that mean the operate the drone that followed Lupon around the entire time from the beginning was actually Lupons? Or only recently that it became Lupons? I'm, I'm not sure how the fuck that worked, but... But yeah, obviously it got revealed that Lupon didn't get killed. But Ami got, uh, went into custody under Zenigata. Kind of a, I thought they were gonna make Ami some kind of a fucking adopted daughter of Zenigata because they're, they're shown eating like breakfast together in, their, in Zenigata's fucking apartment. And I was like, what, does she fucking live with him now? It's kind of fucking weird. I wouldn't call Zenigata a weirdo, maybe he is, but he is a little bit, but like... It's weird that he would take someone in like that. But no, he didn't. I guess he just let her stay one night or some shit, I don't know. So, she goes to this, like, abandoned mall where the crypto miners are hanging out. Which are the current bad guys before the major bad guy gets revealed, I guess. And, um... And she goes there, she gets tortured. Like, almost drowned. So the crypto guy would get some in info out of her. And this is what I don't understand. So the crypto guy fooled her into getting on a chair and then flooded the room. So she would drown. And then she didn't give him the information he wanted, so she almost fucking drowned. So he rushed to the room where she was in. I guess to open the door and let the water out. You know, it probably should have been... Whatever. And... And then it gets revealed that the room wasn't fucking flooded, but you fucking saw the water pour in, and it's like, that was part of his plan. How the fuck was it not flooded in the end? I don't really understand that part, but whatever, and... And yeah, and Lupon shows up, and Zenigata show up, and Zenigata arrests the, uh, crypto miners. The rest of the crypto miners get... I don't know what happens to them, but basically it's shown that they also fucked up. Is, uh, Goemon and Jigen almost killed them. They didn't kill them, but I guess like they would if they tried something funny. So I, I don't know what the fuck happened to them. Why am I quitting another mission? What is fucking wrong with me with this fucking let's play recently? And then Ami, thankfully, on one side I'm kind of thankful that she left, because she left. I believe she comes back later because I saw... I when I was going through the files, there's like a little thumbnail you see, and she does appear on one of the thumbnails in a later episode. But she's gone for now, because she she goes to school, you know, she finally finds some kind of hope. 
in humanity, which she lost before because she was super fucking depressed this whole time. She just keeps saying how humanity makes no sense and nothing makes sense and everything's fucking dumb. And classic fucking edgy bullshit like that. I'm not even looking at the fucking stats, I don't fucking care. What is wrong with me? I'm so desperate for like one little fucking more, one more damage to deal. Then I'm gonna fucking equip this fucking stupid ass cape. Oh yeah, I forgot to equip my shoulder pads. Okay, now that's... That's a fuck up. Oh, there were shoulder pads, the thing I got from uh, that Carmen guy. So I guess they weren't completely useless. Okay, it's 800 fucking health, that's pretty fucked up. No, keep it, he gets 800 health with that shit. Look at that. Fucking insane. In the membrane. Yeah, so she goes to school and leaves. Now the next episode, episode 6, is fucking ridiculous. First of all, episode 6 should be called episode like 5.5. .5 because it has nothing to do with the main story. It has nothing to do with the previous episodes, it's a filler episode. But not only is it a filler episode, it's a filler episode that doesn't even take place during part 5. It takes place during part 3. Lupin is back in his pink jacket, this is the best part of this episode. Just seeing these characters but like more detailed with the designs from part 3 is really cool. And as much as I'm not a big fan of Lupin in, in, in Lupin's design in part 3, Jigen's design in part 3 is really cool because instead of being dressed in all black, he's dressed in green. Which makes him look really cool. I think in the Fuji, uh, woman called Fuji Komina, he's also dressed in green. Like they took that design and kind of made him more edgy. Like he gets like a bunch of cool shit on him and stuff. Whatever. And. And yeah, then, uh, then you gotta his, his green outfit too. Goemon, I guess, too, but I don't even remember what Goemon design looked like. Goemon kind of looks the same all the time. I guess he was sli slightly more purple in part 3, because that's how he appears here. Fujiko also looks a bit different, I couldn't stop thinking about that, how Fujiko appears a bit, like, more cartoony. Like, her eyes are bigger, and her hair is different. Yeah, but this, this episode's plot is that there's these two inventors who are dumbasses, I don't know if they're from a different anime or if they're supposed to be a reference to something, like perhaps like a comedy duo in Japan. That's what they felt like, but I don't fucking know much about the comedy scene in Japan. So whatever. And yeah, they they invented this fucking magic... Not magic, they invented... Uh, I'm calling them dumbasses because that's how they act, but they're, I guess, pretty smart to be able to invent something like that. They invented a vault that can only be opened by uh, scanning someone's intelligence, basically. You put on uh, this big helmet, kind of looks like the helmet from Back to the Future that Dr. Brown had at the beginning. That I don't think he ever... Did he say what the fuck that helmet did? Maybe he did, but I wasn't listening. Whatever, and... And they, you put on this helmet and... Lupin is very intelligent as this episode reveals, and his intelligence, his IQ is at 300. Which I don't fucking doubt, Lupin acts silly and fucking stupid sometimes, but... Like the last couple of episodes proven that he planned shit ahead like two episodes in advance, so... He has to be pretty smart to be able to plan ahead this fucking much, and pull it off. And he is the fucking world's greatest thief. So I bet you can't be an idiot and also be the world's greatest thief. Yeah, so he... He basically spends the entire episode trying to figure out how to make himself into such a dumbass that he will ab be able to pass. And then Jigen and Fujiko really enjoys that idea. They really enjoy that idea. They start beating the shit out of him with like random objects. Fujiko constantly wields like cartoony hammers in this episode, which is pretty funny. This episode's really fucking silly. Like, the delivery of characters is also different than it was before. There's like way, it's like way more faster and snappy. So I guess that's, that's supposed to add to the element of comedy. Which I like. And, yeah, so the whole episode 
Lupin does a bunch of dumb shit, like he rides on hogs, he does a bunch of reckless bullshit. He's getting beaten over the head by with pans and hammers by Jigen and Fujiko. The reason that he does that and robs this whole fucking bank is not to prove that he can. It's because he owns money to Jigen, Fujiko and Goemon. And he needs to rob a bank to pay them off. And that's the main reason why he does that. Yeah, and the owner of the bank, you know, shows off the vault as, in, as this, like, best security system ever invented. And he wants, I guess, investor money, so other banks will buy this from him. Even though it's the inventor's pattern that should probably be bought, but whatever. I don't know, maybe he funded them, maybe he's part of the deal. Probably. Possibly, I don't know. Yeah, so Lupin goes to prove himself. And everybody's waiting there, even Zenigara stands there to see that can Lupin pull it off. And Lupin can't, because you have to reach level 0 with your intelligence to get through the fucking vault. But he reaches level 1, so that's a bit too high. Oh, also the inventors, there's like the older brother and the younger brother. And they say the older brother is such a dumbass, he actually has zero intelligence, like all the time. But I don't know, it's a bit harsh to me. Zero intelligence, I imagine being someone who's just like a vegetable, doesn't do anything all day, fucking sits there and drools. Drool sounds like a like a fan like a shitty fantasy villain, doesn't it? Yeah, and then something comes to Lupin, he realizes that what he can do instead is make himself even smarter to make the counter go around and reach zero. So he pulls out a bunch of fish and starts eating the fish to become smarter because, you know, eating fish kind of makes your brain work better. And then Fujiko goes on like a fucking rant about how fish is good for your brain. And he opens the vault, steals the shit, I guess pays off his friends. And then we see the inventors uh, begun manufacturing uh, canned fish. So that's nice to see that they actually... I don't know, do something worthwhile. Not that creating imaginative fucking uh, vaults wasn't very uh, worthwhile, but what I mean is they do something that can they can pay off their debts. Because they're part of the reason why they built that vault, so they could get paid for it and pay off their debts, because their house was about to be taken away from them. So that's why they did it. You guys think I will succeed in this mission? I don't even know what the fuck's going on in this episode. I did like one mission. This episode was fucking weird. I got a feeling this is just what I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna do a bunch of previous missions that I already did. Until I fucking finally do the main one. There's only f there's 41 episodes. This is episode 39. So next episode that I'm about to record uh, is also. Is also um, it's 40 minutes long, not an hour like I thought. The next one is an hour. The last one is an hour long. And the reason why it is that fucking long is because the main final boss fight just takes that fucking long to defeat. And yeah, I don't know what the fuck else I have to say. I'm really glad to see the part 3 designs kind of come back. I was honestly surprised this episode takes place during part 3. So I imagine the next episode is gonna begin like the second arc of part 5. And then what, we're gonna get a filler episode that takes place during part 2. And one during part 1. Maybe we'll get an episode during part 4. Like a filler episode, what happened in between part 4 and 5. That'd be kind of cool. There's also this reoccurring thing in this uh, season where Lupin and Jigen are hiding out in like a rented room above a restaurant and they're pretending to be two old men and there's like a woman who serves them at the restaurant uh, under underneath the rented room and she be kind of becomes friends but she thinks that they're all these two old men so I wonder if she will ever like kind of come back in the main story and become important 
see the shoulder pads were worth equipping. This fucking guy is almost invincible. Well, he's not invincible, but he's very sturdy right now. Am I really expecting myself to genuinely beat that fucking gate? But oh my fucking god again! Bullshit. Wow, I sure fucking love this episode. Fucking being glued together from three different fucking parts. I fucking hate whenever I have to do that bullshit. Where I have to glue episodes together from like different parts because everybody's fucking calling me. Fucking wants something from me. Fucking annoying. Annoying bullshit. <sighs> now I fucking forgot what I was talking about. I guess part 3. I don't know, I love this episode. Episode 6. It was a really cool callback. Part 3. You know what's an interesting thing? I don't think any of the movies, any Loop on the Third movies ever had the pink jacket. You know, there was a Castle of Cagliostro. Oh, speaking of Castle of Cagliostro, after they beat the shit out of Loop on and they bring him to the place where the vault is, they bring him and he's like covered in bandages. And they bring him in the same fucking fashion as when they brought him after he supposedly died in Castle of Cagliostro. Beautiful episode. I failed every mission I fucking tried. So that's another callback. And yeah, I really liked it. None of the movies ever gives the pink jacket, that's what I was trying to say. See you fellas on the next episode, bye.